the um, Christians of Muhammad's time, the Jews of Muhammad's time, the pagans of Muhammad's time, all told various stories about the figures that they believe in. And what you find in the Quran and Muslim sources is that Muhammad adopts these as true Muslim stories. And what's interesting is that some of the times we know where the story comes from. Some of the times we know exactly where the story comes from. Muhammad takes stories that are not true and that we know are not true, and he adopts them as part of the Quran. So, for instance, uh, according to Surah 19, Jesus began preaching as soon as he came out of Mary's womb. Now, the, the difficulty here is that uh, no one in the first century reports this, and this is certainly something Jesus' early followers would have reported. But the, the, the bigger problem is we know where the story comes from. We know where the story comes from. It comes from the Arabic infancy gospel, which scholars unanimously reject as an obvious forgery. I mean, it's, I mean you, you couldn't have a more obvious forgery that doesn't go back to the first century. And Muhammad adopts the story as part of Islam. And this is a pattern we find over and over again. Uh, when we look at the Quran, Muhammad tells a story, and we can trace the story back to a forgery or to some other historically inaccurate account. And let me give you uh, another example. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 15, we're told that uh, God called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans. Ur of the Chaldeans. In the Babylonian language, Ur just means city. So this is the city. This is city of the Chaldeans. Um, but... Uh, in, in the, uh, so this, that's Babylonia, right? We, we have to make a point about different languages. Uh, in the first century, a Jewish rabbi named Jonathan ben Uziel was translating Genesis 15 into Aramaic, and he came to this word, Ur. Now, Jonathan didn't know Babylonian. He didn't know this language. Um, so he confused the Babylonian word, Ur, which means city, with the Hebrew word, Ur, which means fire. And so when Abraham is delivered out of the city, the city of the Chaldeans, Jonathan ben Uziel translates this as Abraham was delivered out of the fire of the Chaldeans. And why is this interesting? Well, if you open up your Quran, you'll find out that in the Quran, um, in Surah 21, Muhammad reports that Abraham was delivered out of the fire. So Abraham is delivered from the fire. Now, I, I, I don't know what you do with this, right? We know the origin of the story. The story is based on a mistranslation of the book of Genesis. The story became popular, it's circulating in Arabia during this time, of Abraham being delivered from a fire. And then the story of Abraham being delivered from a fire, lo and behold, becomes uh, part of the Quran. Now, what do you do with this? Do you say that... Jonathan ben Uziel, he accidentally, I mean, he mistranslated it, but then he got it right through his mistranslation, and there was this lost story about Abraham being delivered from fire, and people didn't know, and he got it right by mistranslation, then Muhammad picked it up. Uh, what do you do with this? This is, I mean, and we find this over and over again in the Muslim sources, but so Muhammad doesn't just adopt practices that were pagan in origin, he adopts stories that are obviously false, and we know are false, and Muslims will still cling to the Quran as the clear word of God.